What's up guys, today I'm going to show you how to create nice chrome effects on Blender even if you don't anything about Blender, it's super easy and then we're going to do some post-productions on Photoshop so without any further ado, let's get to it So first things first, I imported a shape on Illustrator. You can, you know, write any text or add any objects and shapes that you want. Doesn't matter. So first things I'm going to do is that I'm just going to image trace it for it to become a vector. And then I'm going to expand it and I'm going to delete all background white layers so i'm just gonna delete that and also delete all of these parts after that because i did an image trace uh, i need to go to the edit edit colors and convert it to the rgb and change the color to whatever color i want after that just simply click on your layer and go to the windows and click on 3d and materials and here when the window is opened just simply click on inflate and as you can see now we are already having a little bit of a 3d effect just make sure your depth is on zero and make sure that you will check inflate both sides and after that simply go to the windows and click on asset export mine is here and simply when the window is open just drag and drop your object there and on the format make sure that you're selecting obj and just simply click on export and export whatever want to save it after that just open up the blender the good thing is that blender 3d is for free you can download it from the website so the first things first is that when you open up your blender you just need to delete everything here so just you know uh, select everything and by x simply uh, hit x and just delete everything here after that, we need to import the OBJ, the ob object file that we saved from Illustrator. So just uh, click on files, import and click on wavefront OBJ and just choose your desktop or wherever you saved your file. And you will see this uh, OBJ folder here. Click on that and you have two files. You need to select the OBJ file here and just hit import wavefront so now it is being imported as you can see so here you can just you know click and you know see whatever object you are having you know just click and move it around so we need to make this one uh, smaller so simply hit s and you will see this arrows becoming visible so if you just you know drag the arrows toward the center the size of the you know object will be much more smaller because it was so big and now i'm just gonna click on this y here so that now i can see my object uh you know in front of me exactly and now you we have to just you know change some settings to have better results first things first i'm going to go to the here on the right panel go to the output and i'm just going to change this to 4000 by 4000 this is my uh, render quality and resolution and after that uh, as you can see we have this window down here just drag it up and this is for the playback i'm going to change it here to the shader editor here we can just change uh, our material but i'm not going to change the material of the object i'm going to change the world around it uh, so that it would affect our object so just click on your object first now you can see the asset has been selected this is my object and come down here to the material and here you will see all the materials on your object you might have multiple here just click on minus till you have nothing like this solid white and gray and after that simply click on new material and here you need to crank up the metallic and bring down the roughness so before doing that let me just show you 
you need to click on this button here called viewport shading now you can see the shading of your uh, object so just crank up the metallics now you can see it is changing and bring down your whiteness and now already as you can see we're having some kind of a chrome effect here but we have to just change uh, some other parts also so after that what you need to do is to just go to the world and from here you need to click on color and not the color itself but this icon the yellow dot here and choose environment texture because we are going to change the texture of our environment around the object and now from here we need to open up a chrome texture that I'm going to show you how you can just find those. Uh, I will put a link in the description. You can download uh, five different Chrome textures and use on your files. But before doing that, I'm just going to go here and we, we have opened the shader editor. And instead of object, as I told you, we need to select our world. So now you're seeing that we are having a world texture this is the background effect and this is the texture i'm going to add and i'm going to show you what this means so i would just simply click on open from here or here doesn't matter so i'll just open it from here and on my desktop i have uh, a texture called amber realism so this is my texture here i would just simply select that yes if you just hold on uh, your file you can see the preview of it and just hit open image and now i want to see the world around so i would just you know bring my mouth over here till i see that plus sign and i would just simply drag it over here now i have two windows and for this one i would just simply hit the viewport shading uh this is the render so as you can see now if i just you know change the view position you can see our texture that i just added this was the texture is affecting our world around so i'm just gonna change some uh settings so that we have this uh transparent background and we would make it you know affect our object so basically i would just go to the render settings here and down uh we have this uh film drop down menu that it I would just open it up and I would simply click on transparent. Now the background is just invisible. And then I would go to my world properties that we have just added our, um, you know, the background texture. And instead of this one that I don't even know how to pronounce it, I'm going to choose the mirror ball here. So it will just, it would just, you know, change the texture. So as you can see this is before and this is when i choose the mirror ball i like this one better so now we are going to work on the texture itself but before that i'm just going to go to create a camera so that it, we would just see our uh, object and textures and everything in, in you know inside that camera shot so here i would just hit shift a and it will bring this add list here i'm just going to add a camera and as you can see uh, this is our camera here and we can just simply move our camera and now we have this camera added to our layers uh, you can just change this camera by selecting this object the camera we have and we can just change these locations or you can just come up here simply click on this gizmos and you know turn on the move now we have these uh, arrows and i'm just going to you know move out my camera but here on my uh, rendered viewport i need to see my camera so i would just simply go to views and select cameras and active camera now you are seeing you know your scene from a camera viewport but here I'm, i just you know need to just bring back my camera a little bit more that and you know bring it out so as you can see now our shape is inside our camera viewport perfect so now we're going to work a little bit on the texture itself so here in the shader node we need to add some stuff so simply hit shift a again shift a is for adding you know different adjustments so simply search for mapping and shift a again and just hit coordinates 
this is for the texture coordinates and i'm just going to tell you what all these thing all these things means so connect vector to the vector and connect object because we are going to uh, you know change the coordinates of the object's texture and we are going to connect the object to the vector and now here if i just simply you know make this windows bigger and now from here you can see if i change the xyz the location of the image that i added to the background to the world or if i just you know change the rotation of it and uh, how it will affect my uh, object here so i'll just you know if i just bring these down and up you know you can see the difference it will make so i'm just gonna change a good part so I myself came up with something like this, but always have that in mind that you can simply open up other images. So I had this other Chrome texture here, this one. So if I just open it up, then again, you know, I have completely new image to work with, you know, something like this. So I'm just gonna work around this one also so that you can see each image can generate new chrome effects for you so for this one i came up with something like this one you know you can just always change everything but i like this a uh, little bit of a you know silver type with this uh, blue uh, yellowish effects down here so after that you can just simply go to the render and click on render image and now as you can see you're having your effect implemented on your object simply go to the image and hit on save as here i'm just gonna say um, chrome shape one I'm going to save it on desktop with the format of PNG and click save image as. And here is the fun part. I have opened up a file on my Photoshop in a size of 3000 to 3000. I'm just gonna hit command I to make it black and I'm just going to drag and drop my object here. First things first, I created a duplicate and on the bottom one, I'm just going to go to the filter, blur and Gaussian blur. I'm just gonna add a little bit of a gust into it you know a little bit of a blur here you can even bring it on top and select screen to make it more uh, you know shiny and everything but i want to keep it down in the background and make it 50. i'm just gonna uh, hide that one and here i would just simply hit command shift alt e on top of everything to create you know a merged layer on top of everything I'm going to go to the filter and camera raw filter and i'm just going to add some adjustments here and after that i'm just going to select my you know, object again and simply hit uh, the mask layer and now i'm just you know check on this one with the blur effect on the background and I'm just going to do one more thing. I'm just going to add another duplicate of this one. Go to the, uh, convert it to a smart object and then go to the filter, blur and Gaussian blur. This is a nice one. And I will just change the opacity, the blending mode to the screen and bring it down a little bit, you know. Now we are having that cool uh, glow effect here. And after that, I would just simply Click on new layer, hit uh, shift F5, or you can just simply go to the edit fill, 50% gray, go to the filter, blur, gallery, and fill blur. And from here, add a noise and size, hit OK, and change the blending mode to the overlay. So now you can see we are having this nice noise effect here i would just you know uh, duplicate it one more time or two two more time one more is enough i believe 
but for this one i would just bring down the opacity to 50. so that's it with today's tutorial hope you liked the video if you did make sure to like and subscribe and peace